Hi, my name is Dr. Edith Tukoya, and I'm the head of HRM and OB at the University of Northampton. Today, I'm going to be talking about the winning mindset and how to become a genius. And this is an interesting topic for me because as a child, I've always wanted to be a genius. I thought that would make life so much easier. And I suppose that's what it is for everybody. Because why do I want to spend four hours learning something when I can learn it in an hour? So that is really becoming, for me, growing up, I was always thinking about that because I had some friends who were really, really very smart and they could do things a lot quicker. So I thought, can you imagine being a genius? And I so much wanted to learn about how people do it. So let's start actually, because I probably assume that you are in the same situation. You wanted to know about this. And for me, part of the learning process, especially as a teacher, is to try and find out what it is that makes people very successful. So because this is a recording, I am in normal situations. What I would do is we'll introduce ourselves so we find out more, tell you about who I am and why I'm doing this. And this is the first time actually we're doing this and recording it because I'm curious about it. And I'm also sure that some of my students will be curious about it because can you imagine if you don't have to come to class, you can learn everything and you're so, so super good and you're just fantastic. Everybody will want that particular one. So for me, the first question for you is what are your biggest dreams? Because if you do know what your biggest dreams are, then you can aim for it. And being a genius really helps because then if you don't know what you want to be, because I remember I saw a video of somebody who was supposed to have the highest IQ in the world, but he's actually not doing anything with it. He could memorize everything and that's it. But he had no really serious jobs. His only thing is to go around trying to tell people how smart he actually is. And I think that's a genius. There's no doubt about it. He's very, very smart. But what is he doing with it? Apart from appearing on TV just to say, you ask me any questions and I'll be able to answer or I can memorize books. I think we can do more than that. But if you know your goal, if you know where you're going, then becoming a genius is something that you will be interested in. So stay around and let's see how this plans out. Okay. So my question to everybody is, who wants to be a genius and why? And people will say all sorts of things about why they want to be a genius. So in this case, I want you to either stop this for a while and think about it and write it down. Why do you want to be a genius? Yeah. So I assume most people want to be because it's easy. But why? What do you want to achieve? Is it because you want to design the best cars in the world? You want to be able to work for NASA? You want to be able to go into space? Why? Because there's no point in being a genius and just sitting there just thinking, I'm a genius. And what is your definition of a genius? So think about some of these things. So here is what I've managed to find out is we all have the fascination for that we want to be because we think that will make our life easier. So the next thing we're going to do is who are the geniuses? Who are the people that we all consider to be geniuses? And if you go back in history, some of the biggest people, some of the smartest people, they were actually ordinary people. And that is what I want us to get at. So the smartest people in the world were people who have managed to focus and improve daily. And then a few years later, we find out, say, oh my God, that person is a genius. I want to be like them. But what we do not consider is the effort that they've taken into getting to that point. So if you want to be a genius, of course you can be, but it means you need to focus. For example, I stand on mathematics, right? Steve Jobs on designs and everything else. And what you will find with all of these people is they were not born with that. They might have a bit of an advantage. Maybe you have computers at home or something else. The rest of us, they're not, but they've put in a lot of hours. I remember, I think it was Gladwell that said, to be a genius, we need to be very good at something. We need to put in over 10,000 hours. And some of these people, they will start very early, maybe at the age of 10 or 5 or 6. They found something. The chess masters are like that. From the age of 3 or 4, they started doing something. And they love it so much that they keep practicing, sometimes 8 to 10 hours every single day. I remember, I think, I felt the swimmer was always seven days a week. So you can see what happens is genius is about focus and daily improvement over a period of time. So it's not, I can do it so well today, I can continuously do it so well. You can see golfers like Tiger Woods, they started practicing for a long period of time. So we're all geniuses. We know that. Have a dream and walk towards that dream. But can you imagine some of the best people like the chess masters trying to play tennis? Or Serena Williams, one of the best tennis players of all time, trying to play football. So you can see what happens is people decide on what it is they want to do and then they focus. Whereas the rest of us, sometimes we fumble around not knowing what we want to do. 
I really want to bring in this case of Malala from Pakistan, who spent so much time campaigning for others to be educated. So education is absolutely critical. There is no way I'm not going to mention Ellen Keller, who was deaf, was blind and unable to speak, yet became one of the biggest advocates. So even if we think we have challenges, there are other people who have probably bigger challenges, but have managed to overcome. So we don't have to be born with any advantages. What we do have to be is to take advantage of what we have. So look at some of the things we've managed to get. We can tame the biggest animals. We are, as people, we are incredibly phenomenal. Just the way we are. We have organs. We have all these wonderful things within us. And there are 8 billion of us. But yet we control this incredible world that we live in. So, for example, for some of you in my class, just think of some of the advantages we have over people who will trade places to be where we are. I always try to say this to people, and this is just my story. So depending on who you are, my story might not be relevant to you. If you don't know me, my name is Elio Tukoya. I'm saying this again. And my degrees, my first degree was in economics. Then I read law when I was in the UK. When I first came to the UK, I became an accountant. I did my MBA. I did my PhD and all of those. And people always ask me, why I'm so interested in education. And it's very, very simple. I remember growing up in Lagos and my grandmother was barely literate, actually. She could only write a few words. And one of the days I came home and um, I was thinking about how tough it was to go to school. I didn't want to go to school. And she said something that profoundly changed my mind, not at that moment, but years later when I was thinking about it. I love my grandmother because I lived with her for the first part of my life when my parents were in the UK. And she says something. She said, as a woman, as a lady, as a girl, she was not allowed to go to school, but her brothers were allowed to go and they did much better. And she loved education so much that the only thing she learned was actually just being able to go to them to school. I think she went to primary school so she could write the very basic things. And she said she would have given anything to be in my position because she loved education, but she never had the opportunity. At that point, you occurred to me and I was acting like a spoiled child. I was complaining about education and didn't like it because it was boring. She thought that the position I was in, she would have given anything to be in my position. And she said something else. She said, if you have a chance in life, make sure you study to the end. By the end, I thought in my mind, my grandmother must have been thinking about having a PhD. So I thought, I have to have that, even though my grandmother passed away a long time ago, so that wherever she is today, she'll be thinking that I have achieved that for her. So for some of you always ask me about all the degrees, I can easily explain to you that my economics was my first love. My mother was a lawyer. My mom loved her. My grandmother loved the mom. My mom being a lawyer, so my LLB. I did accounting because I had to make a living, isn't it? The MBA, though, definitely for my grandmother. But the PhD, definitely, definitely for my grandmother because my grandmother always, always wanted to be able to study to the highest level. So one of these days, I'm hoping that I will have the opportunity to do my own PhD based on what I really, really love to do. And I'm still in search of that. So there you are. You can see that people have been denied the right to education because education improves the world, improves our world. So I hope that you will be able to get motivated by that. But so many people across the world have been denied the right to education. If you have that opportunity, it's fantastic. So what are your biggest dreams? I want you at this point to put something down that said, these are my biggest dreams. Dream as big as possible. What do you want to achieve? How do you want to impact the world? Why do you want to do it? Make it incredibly big because then when you achieve something that you think is absolutely impossible, there was no way I would have thought I would have a PhD. Not in a lifetime because I just was not motivated towards that until I remember my grandmother telling me that story came back over and over again. And I thought, wow, will I really want to disappoint her? And I thought, maybe not. So I should continue to go and make education really, really interesting and make people love to learn. Education is just not about the degree itself. It's about a continuous learning in life as well. So we all want different things. Some people, cars and big houses and everything. We all want different things. Decide on what you want, not what the other people want for you, but about what you want. And then how do you get there? So what are your biggest dreams? Dream up when you were growing up. As children, we had no limitations to the extent of our dreams. So do the same. Be like a child. Go back to that child within and think, 
what in the world do I want to achieve? And that was what I said about it. My grandmother's voice came back to me much later and I thought she meant something and I should try and do something about it. Don't be afraid because if you imagine a child, we're not afraid. A child can touch anything because they had no fear of what that thing is all about. So dream without any restrictions and think about the future based on your learning. We are the luckiest species in the world. Even being here alone, apparently every single one of us is like one in 400 trillion chances of being here. So imagine the chances of your parents meeting at place, all of those, and we're here. So we are one of the luckiest people just by being here. But look at the physical thing we have in our body, the organs and everything. That must be complicated to put together. But yet, we've got them with almost no mechanical device, nothing for us to do to get all of these organs. And if anything goes wrong with them, somebody put a knife on you or something like that, the impact is incredible. And yet, we have not put this massive body together. Some questions for you. What do you think is your purpose? Why are you here? I think that is a critical thing for us to answer. What are the things you really like to do if you don't have to think about money? Start thinking about those things and we'll come to that as we keep going. What are the things that if money is not an issue, you'll be able to do it? And that becomes your target. That becomes what you're chasing in life because that's what you want. Our biggest dream is to be successful, I'll say this. But in between us, though, we have acres of Darwin. And I will tell you a story that has been told. I think it's by Dr. Conway. And Dr. Conway was a preacher over 100 years ago. And he said this story, and hopefully you've heard about this story, about a farmer who owns the land. And every day he was talking about it. He was planting things, potatoes or whatever. And somebody came to see him and said, wow, you are on the farm. You know that in other parts of Africa, there are people who do nothing but just pick diamonds from their farm. He said, really? He said, yeah, they have loads of farm diamonds and diamonds cost a lot of money. So this farmer, I haven't thought about it, he decided that he was going to sell his farm and go in search of diamonds. So he sold his farm and he's traveled around Africa looking. He spent all his money, didn't find the diamond and then committed suicide. That was the end. The same person, though, turned up many years later on the farm just to see how his friend who owned the farm was doing. And then realized he saw, as soon as he stepped in, he looked on the table and saw this big crystal stone. And he said, oh, is the farmer back? Has he found his diamonds? No, the owner said, no, the new owner said, no, this was me. I just, um, these are crystals. These are not diamonds. They're all over the place on the farm somewhere. He said, really? These are diamonds? He said, no, 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 they're not. They're just crystals and there are loads of them. So this other guy, the guy that came in, said, let's go. So they went there and they said, look, they checked. And they called in some experts. And the answer said, these are diamonds, massive amounts of diamonds. But you see what happened was the farmer that sold his farm to go traveling around the world looking for diamonds, they're actually diamonds on his own farm that he sold. He just did not look hard enough. So to all of us, we have the awesomeness in us. We have the great things inside us that can make us into incredible people but we keep looking around for what other people are doing. Stop doing that. Look inside and say, what can I do? What are the things for me? Because every single one of the 8 billion people who live on planet Earth, we all have different things. We worry. I remember somebody saying that we worry about not having shoes, but there are people who have no feet at all, who have no legs. They would have given anything just to have legs, but we worry about them. Again, look at your position and see what happens. From the moment we are born, We are running against the clock. So from day one, we know that is a goal. So from the moment a new baby arrives, we're running towards our death. So what do we do then? Whatever it is we make in between that, that becomes who we are. That is who we are on that journey because that journey will come to an end at some point. So start running against that and start thinking, I know at some point this will come to an end, but what can I do? Time is critical. But success is a progress we become what we focus on. Whatever it is we focus on, if you want to buy a car and you start thinking about that car, you see more of those cars because now your focus is on that particular one. But time is something that we cannot recover every single day. We all have the same 24 hours and we start. Some people will make the best use of it. Others will waste it away, but never to be gained. If you lose money, we can make it back. If you lose time, the chances of getting it is very, very remote. Learning is a secret weapon. 
because people over many years have written about their experiences, can learn from that. We've moved on from the Stone Age and we are now in an incredible place. We have people chucking out information every single day. Our focus is to be able to focus on that particular one that relates to us. You can go on TikTok, but is that what will make a difference to you? So keep looking on what will make a difference. Too much focus is on results. People want to pass and sometimes they have no choice but to cheat. But that's never an option because if you focus on the result, then you've forgotten about the process. Think about the learning as fun process is more important because then you become something in that process and the certificate or so that you get that wonderful but that's just the result of it the learning and the experience that we gain is much more important i sometimes imagine the lives of our sisters they live very simply they have no warmth they just do what is basic but we've moved on from there so we're much much luckier than they are look at some of the massive things that we've built technology of the last 100 years is immersed but we're faced by challenges and it's real don't let me lie to you that life is going to be easy absolutely not so what do you want to do we start with time right where do you want to be the best time to plant a tree i think this is one of the things i've been said i'm not sure we said it anonymously so if you missed the boat 20 years ago plant one now the people who can make a difference to our world are the ones who are ready to plant a tree now knowing fully well they might not sit on that tree they might not have the benefit of that so we are doing things for other people and that's more important than doing things for ourselves if we do things for ourselves when we die nobody remembers because we've been selfish and it's for us but if we do it for other people that will be carried forward into the future so whatever it is we're learning now we're doing now is really about the future it's about building for the future we might not get there say johnny but it doesn't matter because we are living in the moment against the future the journey becomes easier when you know what we are doing and where we're going we know where we're going you put in the sat now but if you don't have that then you are all over the place as well here is a story of six blind men trying to touch an elephant and you can see different perspective every single one of them touching different things will find the elephant they will touch the elephant and say oh the elephant is this the elephant is that so sometimes we're looking at different parts of the world we're looking at different things from different perspective imagine the sense of winning so whatever it is you're doing give yourself the satisfaction and look forward imagine what it will be like for the future think like a genius world war like an olympic gold medalist so if you're going for the olympic you know what it is but if you're a genius then life can be easy because you know you can do things very easily it comes to you very easily be so good that they cannot ignore you so if you find that niche if you keep searching and you find the right things that is comfortable with you then be the expert be so good that people cannot ignore you but you need to find what you enjoy and keep getting better at it develop your mastery when I heard that Albert Einstein, who became one of the smartest people in the world when it comes to theory of relativity and all of those things, he barely passed his master when he was younger. But then he found something in there and he became one of the best mathematicians of all times. So you can imagine things get better the more we learn, especially when we're very passionate about it and we love it so much. For anything we do, prepare analyze your opponents but also be better than yourselves every single day make sure you do your best if you can do that that is fine prepare for those things so that even if you fail you know you've given things your best shot but don't underestimate your opponent make sure you are as good as they can you don't have to be superman but one step at a time will keep getting you better keep practicing one thing that I've always fascinated about is our ability to learn. I remember when I saw this, I thought, wow, before Satnav, Lib, um, London cab drivers used to be able to remember the 25,000 street names and where they are in London. Imagine that. Every time somebody says this location, you think, I know where that is. 25,000 street names just to be able to drive a mini cab. That was why they were able to charge because how many people will be able to do that? But people can do it. It's possible. I mentioned this area and I mentioned it again because I really want people to get to know this, that to be really good, you need to focus on something. And it's better if it's something that you enjoy and love. So if it's your interest, if you love playing tennis, if you love playing football, yes, okay, you know that. What are your skills? Are you good at it though, instead of just watching it? If you are, 
then what are the opportunities? For example, the opportunities could be for you to be a coach of a football team and be able to motivate them because you love doing that. So it is finding those things. It's not something that's always that straightforward. I love this because this is from Finland. Find your own Sisu. And Sisu is about perseverance, determination, and the ability to do incredible things, just to hang in there and keep going. It's that determination that the Finnish people from Finland have in themselves to make sure that they can achieve incredible results. I want you to search for Sisu and say, how can I have that ability to persevere when things get tough? Because they will. You will get knocked down, but you need that ability to stand up and keep going. And if you fall again, fall down seven times or stand up eight times. I think that's what Japan is saying about it. So be ready. The doors are not always going to be open for you. Be ready to push that. To get rid of we only need small steps. Keep taking small steps at a time. Don't overdo it, but keep improving every single day. Start at the bottom. Don't be afraid. No matter how old you are or how young you are, be ready to start and then make your way up slowly but surely. To get great results, start small. Practice if you want to keep fit. Do some of those things that make you do that. Of course, you will get knocked down. There is no doubt. You know, somebody's going to be better than you. Somebody's going to have done some practice. But if you go down, keep fighting. You can grow on daily. If you're going to go for daily walks or daily jogs, whatever it is you want to do, do it every single day because the more you do it, the better you get. But if you do it once in a while, it's very difficult. But put it as part of your daily routine, it will get better because you get used to it. Find something that excites you and you will never have to work again. Find something so good that you're so good at and hopefully somebody will pay you for it. We learn by playing because it's fun. So you do this because you love it. So find that thing that you will enjoy and like a child, just, I mean, children love to play and they play all the time because it's fun to them. So find something like that. I keep saying this, be like water, flexible, adaptable, but powerful because if you leave water in a place for too long, in a house or on steel, it will absolutely destroy it. But what is easy, we need it, we can drink it, we can wash with it, we can do everything with it. But it's also too much of it though. But be resistant, keep in there, be powerful, be flexible. This was a story that somebody said about the chicken and the pig. They decided to start a restaurant selling breakfast. And you know people, they have eggs and bacon. The chicken though, will only have to contribute the egg. But to make the bacon, the pig has to die. That's what I call commitment. And that's what this is all about, is be committed. If you're committed to something because you love it, then it makes a whole lot of difference as well. So whatever it is you want to do, be committed so that when you are committed and focused on everything else, then the result will be because you have nowhere else to go because you are committed to getting that result because you know you are right. I'm not saying be fixed about it because sometimes you think you are onto the right thing and all other opportunities come along as well. Own your day. So start early and continue to plan for the day ahead of you. Whatever happens, make sure you enjoy yourself because otherwise it's a miserable world. Have fun, enjoy yourself, make sure that whatever it is you're doing, have fun with it as well because if you're having fun, then there is no wasted life. Whatever happens, keep dreaming. Don't give up. We sometimes work so hard, but we give up too early. This is probably just around the corner, so keep going at it. If you're going in the wrong direction, then it's easy to back down and say, okay, fine, I made a mistake, I'm coming back. But you never know if you're on the right path keep on going. Your limitation is only in your imagination. So we can achieve so much and it will be fantastic for you to get to that point. Make your own magic. Things don't naturally happen. We have to make it happen. So thank you so much for listening to this. I hope you have enjoyed it. The essence of this is to inspire you, is to make sure that you make the very best use of the opportunities. For young people, it's easy not to even think about the future. But the future is just around the corner. And every single day we go to bed and we wake up, we are closer to that future that we think is way out. So keep striving. Keep trying to be the best. Don't restrict yourself. Don't say, well, now that I've invested so much time in this, I don't think I can go back. No. It's a journey. And keep striving towards that journey. Keep exploring. Keep trying to be the best version of yourself. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. It doesn't matter because we're all different. But you are you and continue to be you. Ignore the noise and spend your time focused on getting the result that is good for you. Forget about other people. They are not relevant when it comes to your dream. 
So for me, the biggest impact we can have in this world is to help others, to lift them up, not to criticize them, not to be nasty to them, but to lift them up. By lifting them up, we're lifting up ourselves as well. And what a wonderful time to be alive. What a wonderful future we all have ahead of us. And it's fantastic to be around. Be positive. Be brave about the future. And embrace that future. Because it's yours. Nobody else. There's only one life. And we have to make the very best use of the one we have. We don't know whether we're going to come back. We don't know whether there are other opportunities somewhere else. But we're here now. So make the best of now. Wishing you all the best. Thank you.